This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show backstage at the 2008 Warp Tour with Nick Hippa of As I Lay Dying. Yeah, Nick, how you doing, buddy? I am doing wonderful. Now, now tell me, uh, just tell me about the name. Like, what, what have you heard from the other guys in the band about what inspired As I Lay Dying? Well, the name itself was just taken from the William Faulkner novel. It had like the book itself doesn't have any sort of literary significance. It just sounded like a brutal name. Yeah. I'm just like let's go with that, and so that's been the name. Now, Nick, tell me about your emergence in the band. You know, the band had had put out an album on Metal Blade before I was in it, but um, before that, they were on a small record label called Pluto Records, and I was in a band at the time that was on Pluto, and we had toured together, and just. The way things worked out, like my band ended up diffusing right as they needed a new guitar player, and so since we had already had like a relationship as friends and were aware of each other as like musicians on tour, it just seemed like the natural thing. And so I ended up playing with the guys around um, the very beginning of 2004 while we were still promoting for Hours Collapse, and I've been in the band since. And what kind of success have you seen in the band? Like some of the awards we've been nominated for, like the Grammys and and like um, like Headbangers Ball Awards and stuff. Those have, I, I guess you can say, are like indications of success is where I can be like, hey, Grandma, check it out, you know? I'm doing something legit. As far as guitar playing goes, who are some of your influences? You know, that's that's like, it's hard for me to say. Like, I, I grew up like a metal kid. I liked, you know, all the metal dudes like uh, Randy Rhodes and Dimebag and guys like that. And pretty much just all of the guitar heroes, you know, Jimmy Page, Jeff Beck, Clapton, Hendrix, all those guys. and. Um, I, I had always admired them, but I can't really say that that too many people have like shaped my playing itself. There was a, a band when I was growing up called Embodiment, and um, I was a really big fan of their guitar player because you know they were a local band. He was someone I looked up to, and I could I could like feel like the connection, and I could see see him playing those things in front of me. And he was kind of a a big big deal to me. His name's Andy Godwin, and he's in a band now called The Famine. And that, like, a band like that was more influential to me than, say, like, um, you know, than Jason Becker or like Steve I. Even those guys, even though those guys like can shred really hard, and I love them, their influence isn't heard in, in my playing as much as like, you know, some of those other local bands that I would see. So, so there's no, we don't hear any Randy Rhodes influence in your playing. Actually, you know, yeah, you probably might. I'd like to think you do, but. It's kind of hard being like, dude, you can totally hear Randy through my fingers. But I do, I think I've, I listened to stuff like that so much as a kid um, that just when I when I like go to write music, I, I tend to think more like melodically kind of like that. And so I think for me, I, I can hear some things that either that I'm like, oh, it's kind of, kind of close, but not close enough. Yeah, <laughs> I know, not even, the funny thing is, is he was never really I mean, Zach's a great guitar player, but he was never really ever able to completely replace Randy. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, like I, I definitely, I, I love Zach. Yeah, and of it, course. The thing, the thing that I thought was cool is he didn't try and become Randy. He just was Zach, you know, and yeah. he just he used his own presence. And there's like different eras. It wasn't someone trying to be like the other. And I, I I've seen them. I've seen like Zach play like Randy stuff, and he, he just like shreds it, you no, know. And I'm I know. Still, yeah. I know. But I think I, as a guitar player, it's not really about playing somebody else's stuff and being able to pull it off. It's that Randy actually created those solos. Yeah, yeah, no, and, or just like the songwriting too. And that's that's another thing. Like I, I, I think guys that can shred are really awesome. But I'm also a big fan of just dudes that can write. And how I, does how does how does the writing process come together for As I Lay Dying? Uh, just I think the way it, it does with any like professional type band, because you know. Being a kid in local bands, like all my life, you just show up to practice sometimes, and you're like, "Does anyone have anything?" And it's very unproductive. But the way we do things is, normally somebody has a brainchild. Um, Phil, our other guitar player, he he like rip, can riff for days, and then Tim, you know, he our, our vocalist also like um, plays guitar and is pretty good at the drum machine. And then like we'll all have a direction for a song in our head. Phil will come to practice with like a couple of riffs and think of an arrangement. Um, Tim and I usually like try and track things like I, I do a real ghetto like garage band recording and um, like program drums really stupid like and just like hey what do you guys think and if everyone hates it then we move on but if, if like if there's things about it we, that everyone likes then we'll work on it together from there so an idea and a direction is brought to everyone and then we all shape it together.
What is the easiest thing about going on the road, and what is the hardest thing about being on the road? Well, it's different on a summer tour like this because we're like at random like fairgrounds and stuff like that. But one of my favorite things about touring is just like the inconsistencies of like being in a different city every day. And depending on what kind of tour it is, if it's like a European like major market tour, I'm seeing like London and Paris and you know like in Berlin all in, in like the same week. And that to me is like is a real joy. And um, but on the same same note, like the inconsistencies of touring are also kind of it's like down like downfall because I, I hate like not just having like like being in my routine of like going like surfing and then like going home and like having my own bed and hanging out with my girlfriend or like chilling with my friends or doing any of those things. So that's the hardest thing for me. And also like maintaining relationships just calling my mom, seeing my friends and everything. Now what about the temptations that are on the road? How do you fight them off? How do you deal with them? Or are you just not tempted, which seems hard to believe? Yeah, it's 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 like a, it sounds like I'm just making this up, but really I don't ever like deal with stuff that I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I should, you know, I, I don't really get tempted by everything. I guess that, I guess I can like account like a good upbringing and then having an awesome girlfriend to kind of like, you know, account for that, I guess. Yeah. I don't know how you're able to rise above it. Well, they're like as far as you know, like partying hard or like anything like that, like drinking or whatever. Like, I uh, we're we're like very serious about this band, and I I just personally couldn't do it because I feel like it would take it would take a toll on my body, and I w it would like inevitably for, like affect not only my playing but like my on stage performance. And I just want to be on point, you know. That, that's why I'm here, and so that's that's job one. And then. As far as girls and stuff, like not really, like too much of a deal for me. I just read the Brian um, Head Welch, the guy. From, oh yeah, yeah. I just read some of his book, mm -hmm. and he's like, yeah, you know, his wife cheated on him when really? he was on the road with the skinhead dude. Like, you know, when when Corn made it, he's like, now I can marry my girlfriend and like have security. Have yeah, and then she's out like screwing some like skinhead and having skinhead gangs come over to his house that he's on the road. Yeah. You know, and she finally you know broke, you know, they broke it off or whatever, but it was like um he the guys in the band were like, "Look, dude, you need to get into some groupies." Really? He said, "Yeah, he was saying that I haven't read that book. Before that, that every night after the show, there'd be a line of groupies really that yeah that they would that, that the, the, the um, tour guys would get together a line of groupies and they would just come back in this room and just get it on like get free get freaky like yeah. lap dances and all that stuff and the other guys would mock him and go dude come on man yeah you gotta, you gotta taste some of this bro and he yeah. was just like finally after his wife started cheating on him then he did it you know and uh, he's like man some chick wanted me to choke her one night. He's like, dude, I just wasn't into it anymore. He's like, two times and I was over it. Yeah, there's something about having that security with that one person. Yeah. It's like, you know what it's like? It's like going home, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it's like when you're away from that person and these other people, they're offering you things, but it's temporal. It doesn't, it's not lasting and there's no, no. truth. Yeah, it's, it. it's fleeting and it's empty at the end of the day, like on both, both sides for the girls that are there trying to meet bands and like dudes and bands, like taking advantage of them. I, I, I like, I just, it's just not how, how I was raised. And I, I like, I was, you know, like I'm a mama's boy. Like I was raised by my mom. So I guess somewhere along the lines, I, I developed a profound respect for women. So it's just, it's just not how I roll. That's just me. And like the guys in my band, we're all like, like to say we're solid dudes. Would you consider your band metal? Yeah. Well, you know, everyone's going to come up with, like we, we're, we're um, often lumped into the metalcore category. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm fine with that if that's what people want to call us because we do have like hardcore elements, like a lot of punk beats. Um, like, you know, we, we had a, um, Earlier in the career, like I will admit, the music was a little bit more like basic, and there were there was a little bit more like stock riffing, like breakdowns and stuff, which I think is cool and fun. But as we get older, you know, we're constantly trying to get better, and it's just like, okay, well, you know, we we understand that fans like hearing that stuff, and we don't mind playing it. But like, I think if you look at the the progress of our records, like we're making improvements, you know, and we're trying to we are trying to like write better songs and become a better band, and like just progress in everything that we do so you know what let me tell you something man 
you are going to do very well in this business. Oh, thanks, dude. You have <laughs> got the right attitude. It's just different strokes for different folks. You know, I'm, I'm not going to knock anyone for for their lifestyle choices and like what they want to do. It just I like I just live my life the way like I like to. You know. Yeah. And, um, we're not all late. like I like having fun and like oh, no, hey no, and you know no, of course what inspired the song nothing left the music always comes first and it was just a riff that like stuck out and we we made a song like around it basically um, the the premise of the song is that people just cling on to things that that are essentially meaningless and at the end of the day or at the end of the proverbial day there's really nothing left because it, you've devoted all your time into this like into this one thing that just didn't really have any meaning anyway. That's dust in the wind. Yeah, dust in the wind. <laughs> and you know what? That's just my interpretation of it because I didn't write it. So if I butchered that, Tim, our singer, I'm sorry. This is the Blurry Out with Eric Blair show with Nick Hippa of As I Lay Dying. Signing off. The Blurring Out show.